my name is Damien Pelliccioni, a.k.a. your game media guru. I want to welcome my fabulous live online audience to this week's edition of Boys in Tech, the Internet's only weekly talk show devoted to discussing the gay side of what's trending on the web. Be a part of our show and tweet us your questions at Boys in Tech. Let's get started. In this week's edition of Gays, Gadgets, and Gizmos, we are going to review some of my favorite smartphone apps and some of the hottest new products to entertain you, navigate you in the right direction. Do you find yourself watching all your favorite shows on Hulu Plus and Netflix? Seems like DVR boxes and TiVos are almost a thing of the past. Google recently launched a breakthrough product that is as powerful as it is small, Chromecast. Chromecast allows you to mirror all your mobile devices and personal computers. It features HBO Go, Netflix, YouTube, Hulu Plus, Pandora, Google Play Movies and Music, and much, much more, giving Apple TV a run for its money. Chromecast retails for only $35 and is available on Chromecast.com or in the Google Play storefront. Is your smartphone GPS not always accurate, correct, or as efficient as you'd like it to be? I live in Los Angeles where traffic is literally my living nightmare. Until I recently discovered the Waze app. Get the best route every day with real-time help from online drivers with the Waze app. Waze is the world's largest community-based traffic and navigation app. Join other drivers in your area who share real-time traffic and road info, saving everyone time, gas money on their daily commute. Your friends are just around the corner with the Waze app. See other friends also driving in your destination when you connect to Facebook. Coordinate everyone's arrival times when you pick up or meet up with friends. Now you're effortlessly in sync when you drive together. Waze is free and available on Windows, Google, iTunes app storefronts for free. How precise is your scale at home? Does it give you your body mass index, body fat percentage, daily calorie intake, and communicate with your smartphone device? Well, if not, you're going to love VitaSign's Bluetooth Digital Body Analyzer Scale. The Bluetooth-enabled scale offers a simple yet accurate way to achieve or maintain a healthy weight, plus monitor daily caloric intake. Once a measurement is complete, the LCD screen displays results that are also automatically transmitted to the VitaSign's iOS app. Track and share data with your free VitaSigns app and maintain goals for up to four users. On sale now for only $99 on touchofmodern.com. This next product is my favorite in this week's Gaze Gadgets and Gizmos. It's a smart, stylish, and social dashboard that updates you on what's most important to you. It looks like a modern alarm clock, but it has the capability of a smartphone device. Nimbus puts your digital life in physical form. Each dial acts as a subtle biometer that syncs in real time so that you don't have to constantly check your iPhone. Nimbus is a highly customizable four dial dashboard that tracks what's important to you. Personalize each gauge using your mobile device to keep an array of info and up-to-date info available at just a glance. Nimbus can monitor your daily commute, traffic, weather, emails, calendar updates, and your social media networks, and much, much more. Nimbus retails for $99.99 and is available at Corky.com. I'm excited to introduce a very special guest this week. Um, they were one of the very lucky couples to be married a few weeks back at the Grammy telecast and the creators of an award-winning controversial show turned feature film, The DL Chronicles. Now let's take a look at the Grammys. All 
I am so proud and pleased to introduce Mr. and Mr. I said it right, Quincy <laughs> and DeAndre Gosfield. Thank you guys so much for joining me on the show. You, Thanks for Thank us. you. I mean, the, first of all, a huge congratulations is in order um, because now that you're married here, um, but also the way that you got married is just outstanding. I mean, I, I, Chris and I can only dream of the way that you guys did it. Uh, Macklemore, Madonna, Queen Latifah, you know, how, what was it like, like, <laughs> Getting married in front oh, of millions of people across the United States and the globe. It was it was surreal. I'm still pinching myself that it really happened. <laughs> uh, every day we get you know some phone calls and emails from people saying, I saw you in Turkey. <laughs> Get married. You don't know what you've done for the world. I'm like, I'm just at home in my pajamas. With <laughs> like, like, my, like, yeah. Exactly. Your Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we didn't see 28 million people watching us. Um, you know, we did see quite a few thousand, um, which was intimidating enough. But just to learn that it was like the largest um, audience um, for the Grammys in I don't know how many years. Amazing. And then when it aired internationally, it went up to like 40 something million people. So, Jeez. you know, the, the thought of that didn't really hit us until long after the wedding was over. You didn't realize like, like what your wedding really meant to like other people around the world. Like no, how that resonated no, no, like that across all. culture, across languages. No, I don't think we thought about that at all. Like I didn't get the, I, up until that point, I was just like, this is cool. I'm getting married on the Grammy. So I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I gotta be nice. I gotta be. And then standing there and it was happening and seeing the crowd and the, and knowing that it was happening like I'm like I'm getting married and I'm getting married yeah. to another guy on national television this is huge, huge. Yeah. this is huge yeah. and like you guys tweeted or I saw on a Facebook post somewhere like who was watching you like so you guys both locked eyes with different celebrities tell me about yeah, it yeah well um you know, when we walked into our spotlight behind uh, me, I guess, was Katy Perry. Uh, um, so DeAndre was having his moment where he was she, trying to <laughs> not started, cry. Yeah, I was trying to fight tears as my niece had just sent me this really heartfelt text before we walked out. Yeah. And I was trying to hold it back. And I saw her and she looked at me and I looked at her and she just was like, Started tearing up. <laughs> so, cool. no, don't do that, please don't do that. <laughs> so, so he began boohooing, and so then I'm like, oh gosh, I promised myself I wasn't gonna be, like be a bubbling fool on television. <laughs> so I tried to look away from him, and when I looked away from him, I caught eyes with Paul McCartney. No, so Paul McCartney. Sir, like, Paul, Sir McCartney. Par Paul McCartney. Wow. I'm like, I'm staring at Paul McCartney right now. At and, my wedding. Yeah, at my yeah. wedding. <laughs> and he was like welling up with tears. His wife or girlfriend, she was in complete tears. Wow. And he put his hand over his chest and he nodded at me. So you got, that's you got a when royal I, nod. Yes, you yes. got a royal nod. I was knighted by you, Sir Paul McCartney <laughs> during my wedding. I have to say, like, I think I was crying when I saw you guys because you had the camera Aww. right on you. I mean, it's so exciting because it was a big secret. Like, none of your family, none of your friends no, knew no about one this. Knew. Like, you, no. how did you keep it a secret? And uh, how did you guys find oh out about this? Gosh. How did you guys get asked to be on this show? Well, first, a uh, friend of ours uh, knew someone in casting. They were they had the secret casting going around for this event because they couldn't tell anybody what it was yeah. uh, at all. So. So uh, somebody recommended us. They were saying, do you know any people who are, uh, you know, uh, 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 committed couples looking to get married soon, preferably gay, yeah. uh, um, and can speak well for yeah. the <laughs> to the media? And so, and... Uh, <laughs> Quincy's like... So, <laughs> so a friend of ours uh, knew that and uh, recommended us. And uh, we sent in a little bio and... They, they reached, reached out us. to us. Yeah, wow, yeah, how yeah. cool. Now, I want to talk about um, you guys as filmmakers because I'm a huge fan. I've been uh, you know, a fan of the DL Chronicles for a long time, so it fits very well into Boys in Tech besides <laughs> your <laughs> Grammy wedding. The DL Chronicles has been officially acclaimed since the debut in 2008 and garnered a huge, like you guys have a massive devoted fan base. Why the long hiatus between you know projects? Well, um... I'll, I'll, I'll keep it brief because mm -hmm. I can be a little windy. Um, when the show was picked up by the network, you know, did very well. The, uh, the Here Network was kind of just going through this huge transformation. Mm -hmm. It had just gone national because it used to only be local. Then at one point it was only like on demand and then it, it became like a national network. And along with so many other, um, you know, companies and networks that were you know being funded by banks and stuff like that they got hit by like 
the financial balloon that like burst. that whole bubble yeah. that burst. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, and yeah. What happened because of that was our sh our second season wasn't able to go uh, immediately into production, even though wow. they had you know greenlit green us. It. Yeah. So it just kind of prolonged, prolonged, and then eventually a few years later. Um, the rights reverted back to us, and so now we're independent again, cool. and we've picked it back up, and, and you know we're moving forward again. So yeah, because I mean you guys have so many people that watch this, so many people that I saw the comments, you know, all, all over Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Um, you know, your fans want to see more of yeah. this show, and now you're going off into like different storylines, right? Like, yeah. what are some of the different storylines that you guys are exploring? Well, in the new episode, we have a, a, a closeted firefighter. Uh, wow! I can't tell you all because there's, a, there's, there's, a, a, there's a twist. Yeah. Um, there's uh, there's a, a pastor story. There's an uh, down low uh, hip hop artist. Uh, we do, we're doing a young teenage story. We wow. haven't coming tackled that coming of age. So you're story. like kind of hitting all the different demographics yes. basically yeah, yes. that are affected within the DL community. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at a <clears throat> clip from the show. Desire to us was like a double death, swift, dying of our mingled breath, evaporation of an unknown strange perfume between us. The subject of down low men, especially within the African American community, is, you know, very controversial and um, the subject of much speculation. You know, over the last couple of years, I think even Oprah did an episode just before she ended her run of her show. Um, why do you think that now, in an everly increasingly LGBT inclusive society, that there still remains a large number of men who engage in this under the radar behavior, um, you know, unknowns to their wives and their girlfriends? Well, I, I would say it's because, you know, uh, there's still something to gain by, you know, appearing to be straight uh, in, your, in the workplace. Stature, power, all of that mm -hmm. stuff still yeah. remains. That stuff hasn't, as a matter of fact, I would say that because of all this new, uh, 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 this vocal, this, this new voice that we have in the community, people are in some pockets are becoming even more resistant because the, it's like the louder we get, the stronger the you know the ties the pushback, on, the pushback. Yeah, yeah. so uh, people who find themselves against this grain uh, still choose to pass because of the benefits of of being able to be to to be allowed into this uh, bigger structure of society this you know that 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 affords them greater power and stature. And you guys do a wonderful job like writing, directing, and producing Thank it. Um, now, I actually am going to take it to the streets. So we're going to take a look at yeah. this week's Twitter question. Take it to the um, <laughs> right? I think that, that works. How is, how is it, this one's coming from Annie Lakowski. How is it that you're able to honestly tackle issues of deceit without making your characters unlikable? Well, I think for us, our goal with the show and with all of our characters is to create human characters. and. Being a human being, none of us are perfect. You know, we all yeah. have our flaws. I mean, even the worst people in the world have something about them that's lovable. And so we definitely try hard not to create one-dimensional, you know, cardboard cutout characters, mm -hmm. but to really show where these people are coming from, um, their families, their communities, uh, their relationships, and what helped form them to become the people that they are, and, and to make the decisions that they're making. So I think. With that, people get to see the humanity of these stories and, and not necessarily view them just as as villains. You know? Yeah, because you guys do a wonderful job of it. I mean, it is a really tough issue. And I've you know I've been to the uh, Outfest screenings before, and mm -hmm. uh, I have to say it's it's in a very humanistic way that you're able to depict these people in these really tough situations. And I'm a big fan of the DL Chronicles. Um, uh, where can we find you guys? What plans do you have in the future? What's next? Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of stuff next. Well, first, the, uh, the new episode, uh, episode Thomas of the mm -hmm. Dio Chronicles is going to be released on the web soon, so people can come watch it on demand. Cool. Um, yes. People have been waiting for that forever. Um, and there's some other stuff that we have in development that uh, we hope to at least 
start the ball rolling by the end of this year, roughly. Nice. Um, a um, little bit of gay content, a little bit of other stuff. Websites, uh, Twitter handles, hashtags? Oh, the website um, is uh, hit Twitter. Twitter handle is at DL Chronicles. Uh -huh. um, hashtag DL Chronicles, of cool. course. Um, Instagram at DL Chronicles. And then there's Facebook.com forward slash DL Chronicles. So the DL Chronicles. The DL Chronicles. Cool. So let me yeah. add the T H E. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the show. It was a pleasure talking to you guys. And again, you, congratulations from the you. bottom of my heart. Um, I want to thank everyone who's watching this week's live episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to us on our feed on YouTube. Share us on Facebook and Twitter. And you can follow me at Damien Media or at Boys in Tech. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe right down here. Leave your comments right down there and thumbs up and like us. We've got prizes for our subscribers. So stay tuned, we've got more in store for you here on youtube.com slash boysintech.